Hello, my name is John Knoll, and I'm one of the original developers of Adobe Photoshop. And I'm going to give you a glimpse into the past. I'm going to do a demo of a very early version of Photoshop. So to start with, I'm going to open up uh, an image that, that got around a lot. This is a tourist picture I took of my wife when we were on a vacation in Tahiti. So this is from Bora Bora. And I used this image for doing a lot of the demonstrations, including the, the first demonstrations that I did at, at Adobe Systems. So I have uh, opened a 24-bit image. We're looking at it on an 8-bit display. but uh, You can still manipulate the 24-bit the image. So I'm going to start by, by cloning Jennifer. So I'm going to start by just tracing her outline with the lasso tool. Then I'm going to tighten up that selection by subtracting out with the magic wand areas that I don't want as part of the selection. I'm going to add back in some other parts that I do want. as well. All right, copy, paste. And now I have a clone. Uh, another part of the demo that I would do is let's make a copy of this island. So again, I selected with the magic wand this island. Copy it, paste it. So now I have this floating version of it. And take it in, flip it horizontal, let's make it a little smaller, tuck it away over here, now let's give it a little bit more atmospheric haze, I'm going to take this floating selection and make it 60% transparent, and there we go. A duplicate island. And another image that I used to do demos with was this Point Reyes image. This was a, an image that was generated by the Lucasfilm Computer Division before they split off to be Pixar. Uh, and one of the, the uh, demos that I used to do was changing the color of the water to blue. If I remember exactly what I was doing here before. Too much there. Undo that. So I can grow that selection a little bit. Too much. All right. <laughs> Just gonna do a little manual extension of that. Of this as well. All right, that's reasonably good. Now I'm going to adjust the hue to a slightly greenish tone. Look at that preview, take the saturation down just a little bit. There we go. Now, green water. Well, there's, there's a, another way to, to extract a mask of the water, and that's to, to exploit the fact that the, there's more blue than green in the, the water. So, let's see if I remember right. One of the ways I used to do this was to do a subtract, use the calculate menu, where I would take, say, the um, blue channel and subtract, I think I would subtract the green channel out. And then we'll put that in a new channel. See what we've got. Yeah, it's a little dark, but uh, I can probably range that up a little bit. Okay. Let me try this again also with the 
try subtracting the red channel out. I think it's going to get me a little better mask. So start with the blue channel, subtract out the red channel, and we'll make that another alpha channel. There we go. I think that's a cleaner extraction. Okay, now I can use this as a mask to change the color. So I'm going to copy that into the selection mask of the image. And now we'll do a hue adjustment. And now you can see that hue adjustment's done, been done with a little more subtlety because the mask was more than just on and off. It was an uh, 8-bit deep alpha channel, so we could get a, a weighted blending from you know, white where it's fully selected to black where it's not selected at all, and any of uh, 255 values in between. Photoshop was also the first application that had uh, soft selections. So you can see that if we bring up the Lasso tool options, you can set... A, uh, a soft edged feather for your selection. And if then I copy this, you can see that that mask now has a, a soft edge, it's not a hard, jaggy binary. And that was something that was really special and different. Uh, the, air, the paintbrush and the airbrush also had uh, soft edges to them. Can't see it here with the uh, with the dialog because it's just a one bit dialog. But uh, let's see. Let's pick a color, a nice red color. And as I paint, you can see that this the paint stroke has got a a nice soft edge, and that was something new and different. Prior to the advent of Photoshop, there were uh, there were systems that did many of these same things. But they were very expensive, dedicated hardware. They're SciTech and, and uh, SciTechs and Crossfield systems that you could go to a, a graphics prepress house and you could rent time on them. And I remember the uh, SciTech system. Uh, I got a quote once that it was that it was uh, nine hundred dollars an hour to use, and you had to have an operator running it for you. So you sat over his shoulder and told him what you wanted to do. So the big revolution here is that, that you had all the same power that you had in a SciTech system, but this is something that can be run by yourself on commodity hardware. So th these are some of the capabilities that I demonstrated for Adobe in our, our first meetings.